been collecting all of the magical loose parts, but now you feel a little bit like a hoarder and not too sure how to organize your latest thingamabob that you found on your last haul? In this video, you'll learn how to store your loose parts with a simple and accessible system that will allow you to capture the creativity of these magical materials. Welcome back. If you're new to my channel, I am Veronica Green, your early years consultant and mentor for passionate early years educators. On this channel, I'll inspire and support you to confidently educate with creativity and connection by helping you simplify your planning, understand behaviors, and curating your learning environment to work with you and the children, all while using the magic of loose parts play. Where do I even begin with loose parts storage? It can be so overwhelming to organize your loose parts. You don't want to forget about that really cool thing. You know, the thing that you have no clue what it's called, but you know the children are going to love it. It's important to use organization and loose part storage ideas that create systems, but to also use these storage areas as a way to increase creativity for you and the children. For many years, traditional storage systems have always been organized by theme, such as like cars, transportation, maybe plants, bugs. But with loose parts, there are endless ways to play with them and there's no right or wrong way. They don't just fall into one theme. That actually defeats the entire concept of loose parts play. Step one is to start physically sorting the items based on the kinds of variables that they are. Many loose parts are categorized into sections such as metals, fabrics, plastic, packaging, natural, glass and ceramics. These physical materials can be used in all different types of play children engage in. For example, the 15 boxes that you recently saved, or the hunks of tree logs that you collected from the side of the road, or objects that you found while walking the neighborhood that are now being stored in your backyard can be used in a variety of play interests with children. To know where to organize these 15 boxes that you've just collected, you have to start thinking outside the box. And this is by using those categories that we just mentioned to help you sort the item. This will keep you from seeing the box as only a building item and instead as a material that can be used in endless ways. One of my newsletter subscribers wrote in and told me that while they're out hunting for new loose parts, this is their mantra. Look at what it can be and not what it is. Remembering the concept of loose parts play, that the creativity and the endless possibilities of how they can be manipulated and used, this needs to be part of our thought process when we're storing them so that we don't lose the creativity of these magical materials. And if you're new to loose parts play, make sure you watch the video getting started with loose parts play as I'll share with you exactly what they are and three of the common misconceptions that can be holding you back from embracing the magic of loose parts play. Step two is to look at the idea of accessibility and availability. Ask yourself these questions. What items do you want stored for easy access on a daily basis? And what items do you want in more long-term storage or put away? This is where the children's current interests and the types of play that you're observing right now will help you make these decisions. If the children are all about ramps and exploring speed right now, then keeping a bin of 20 scarves on your very small teacher counter or AKA the tops of cubbies or the two inch space next to your sink is probably not gonna be the best use of space. It would be better to have items that are handy that will allow you to easily and quickly access so that you can expand and further their learning through their questions and their theories. To make this process easier for you and the children, First, some intentional thinking is needed in setting up your long-term storage space. You want to consider where on the shelves and, and what you will use to store the items with. Having easy access to your beloved loose parts will help foster your creativity because you will actually know what you have and where they are. Next, you want to look at what to use to store your loose parts in. Clear organizational resources are best. This allows you to clearly see what is inside of it so that you don't forget or lose any items. And thankfully, there are so many more economical, clear storage resources out there nowadays. A few I have used are small, clear containers from Dollarama that are also stackable. Not only are they space-saving, they're also educator-proof. 
because we've all been there. We're trying to do all the things, carrying all the bins, and one of them falls and we drop an entire jar of glass stones all over the floor. Any clear storage bin with a lid is going to be the best option. This also curbs the piling and overfilling of resources that can spew off the shelves. Bins that also have compartments will allow you to organize even further your materials. Depending on your budgets when it comes to creating accessible storage for yourself, and if you have compartmentalized bins, if you don't have that, Ziploc bags are another great way to create that compartmentalization. So by putting all of your shells in one Ziploc bag, then all of your rocks, maybe all your pom-poms, and you can put all of those Ziploc bags inside of a clear container. This will allow you to still see see what you have and even within those natural categories. The last step is making sure that you have a home for everything. Having a simple organization system will help reduce your chances of having clutter. Now that you have your items sorted by their different categories, next you start, want to start looking at the different sizes. Typically, you'll want to store smaller items up higher and larger items down below, also based on weight. Using this idea of first organizing by their natural categories and then by size is helping you create that simple organization system. Not to mention a sensory experience that is also very visually pleasing. This is going to make you want to touch the items and use the items and it's going to spark your creativity. Plus, you'll know exactly what you have and where to find it. From the book Conscious Creativity written by Philippa Stetton, she states, your structure or plan should contain both aspiration and achievability. You want your organizational system to not be a chore or to be a source of stress. It is meant to benefit you and the children to have more ease to engage in your curiosities and wonderings. Now, I know it can be hard to not grab an item that has sparked your interest, but when you don't have a viable place to store it and have it organized, this is going to be a clear path to clutter and forgetting what you have. And this is when these valuable, valuable loose parts can start to lose their magic. So here's a bonus tip. Another way to help rotate out extra loose parts is by creating a loose parts lending library with your families. You can choose what items you're willing to lend out and create a borrowing system that works for your setting. This will allow your loose parts storage area to stay organized and potentially open up space so that you can keep collecting and add to your loose parts collection which in turn will flourish everyone's creativity. If you want more ideas of what to collect and using them in your play-based classroom, use the link in the description and I'll send over your free loose parts guide that has inventory lists and tons of examples. Now that you've got a simple and accessible storage system for your loose parts, the next step is to set up engaging invitations to play that use all of your unique items. So watch this video on your screen where I'll walk you through how to set up five simple invitations to play throughout all your learning centers.